Hello students, I am Dr. M. Bhushnam, Assistant Professor in Zoology, Maharani Science College for Women, Bengaluru. Hope all is well. Take care of your good health during this pandemic time. Today, we shall learn another topic related to paper 7 of Zoology that is speciation a driving force of evolution process. The objective of today's session is to understand various types of speciation processes that takes place within the evolution. The contents include role of evolutionary forces in speciation and it is the concept of speciation that includes introduction, phyletic speciation, allopatric speciation and sympatric speciation. Well, speciation is defined as a process of formation of new species from pre-existing organisms. They are of reproductive isolated individuals. A species refers to generally a group of potent individuals of mating. When we say a different species, it crudely means individuals that cannot reproduce or mate among themselves. When we look at the picture down here in the slide, we can find the reptilian population having a common ancestors now started dividing into two groups as there was a geographical barrier such as the river that separated these species into uh, the ancestral species into a new species which are reproductively isolated. I mean to say they cannot come together for the process of mating. Similarly, uh, uh, it refers with the fish varieties that we see on the Pacific Ocean also. The process of speciation or species formation, we call it as generally uh, the concept of speciation. It is one of the key force for the process of evolution. Speciation should occur in the process of evolution. Speciation takes place by two patterns. Namely, number one, phyletic speciation and number two, divergent speciation. The best example for the phyletic speciation is Great Canyon uh, squirrels where a geographical barrier separates out the ancestral population into two different species in later days. And we do have the example of this phyletic uh, speciation is evolution of hearts, which is still under debate, but still uh, we can consider this example for phyletic uh, speciation. We shall understand each of them 
um, me to say their types in detail now. Number one, pilotic speciation. It is also called as anagenesis or translucence spe uh, evolution or speciation. In this type of evolution or speciation, new species are formed from their ancestors in a single or uh, um, lineage or it is a gradual change that occurs both in physical and genetical characters of an organism. It includes connecting links of animals in between, organisms in between. The time taken for um, the generation of new species by this method is very, very long period of time of uh, millions of years. So remember students, in phyletic speciation, we do find creation of new species, but it is from a single ancestor. And this single ancestor gradually shows the changes to form the next species. That again gradually shows further change to form the next species. Like this, a new species to get evolved, we find gradual changes in the organisms and the species. It is because the changes happens both physically and genetically. So it is a, a, a time consuming a process. It do has connecting links in between. Down in the picture of the slide is the example for uh, phyletic speciation, that is evolution of modern hars equus. If you keenly observe the first formed ancestor of hars is Eohippus, which is uh, uh, of the size of a dog. It slowly changes its characters by increasing the length of the legs and bringing certain changes in their teeth and even in their toe structure. So all this is uh, uh, leading to the fast movement or swifting of the organism in the grassland or in the uh, open plain land. Students, if you could observe here, the Eohippus is forming Mesohippus, then into Merichippus, then into Pleohippus, and later to the modern hearts called Aquus. So slowly there is a change in the character, in the lengthening of the legs, their modification in the toe and even in their uh, teeth. So this is one organism of ancestor is forming a next organism, which is a species that will further undergo change to form the next species. So first one is forming the second one, second one is forming third one, third one is forming fourth, fourth is forming the modern species of the um, uh, hearts. So observation here is one species is getting changed to another. If we represent it diagrammatically, it will form a single straight lane. This is the characteristic feature of phyletic evolution or phyletic speciation. A single population gradually changes to another with difference in traits than their original ancestors. So, a new species is getting formed in due course of time. In phyletic speciation, species A will form species B, which forms or it becomes species C, 
then D and so on. Thus, in phyletic speciation, it is represented as a straight line without having the splitting of uh, species in the phylogenetic tree. So, down in the picture, we can see these features of uh, phyletic evolution with reference to modern hairs. The second type of evolution is divergent evolution. In divergent evol uh, speciation or evolution, there is splitting of a given species into many subspecies at the same time. So, the representation of speciation will show the branchings of uh, uh, a tree as we see down in the picture of the slide. So, common ancestor is forming many number of species and subspecies. So, this is called as divergent speciation. Here, in divergent speciation, species A, B and C, all divergent population will exist at the same time and here too, there is presence of connecting links. Fossil evidences for this biological um, evolution process. Down in the picture, it represents a common finch ancestor form. Uh, uh, later develops different species of finches with the diversification of peaks in them. So, this modification is based on the availability of the food source that the organisms depend on. Here too, the divergent speciation, the individuals will remain separated reproductively. So, there occurs the reproductive isolation. Interbreeding or mating is prevented by some barriers. So, generally, uh, the barriers would be of um, um, uh, uh, reproductive uh, related. In divergent speciation, genetic variations and the natural selection are the major components involved in a changing environment. Wider changes in the environment will bring in the genetical changes which gets inherited and such varied traits get selected by nature uh, uh, through the process of natural selection. So, genetic variation and natural selection are two major components involved in phyletic speciation also. Such inherited genetic variations over a period of time makes the individuals to isolate reproductively. Thus, it helps in the process of speciation, that is formation of a new species. So, in speciation, which is also referred to as cladogenesis, arises from splitting of the ancestor forms to uh, distinct species. Here too, uh, we find the geographical um, isolation barriers along with the uh, uh, reproductive uh, barriers. So, when we look at the picture down, you can find the extreme left side is a group of ancestral population which gets separated by means of a barrier in between. 
So it forms two uh, 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 separated groups of individuals. Now, towards the right side, the separated small group of individuals will experience a new environment. So they tend to have certain genetical modifications in their body in order to adopt themselves uh, to the environment. So they tend to have genetic variations in them. So that is represented with a blue shade. So now at the end, there is formation of a new species from the ancestral uh, individuals as what is uh, shown here as blue uh, shaded form. So this kind of uh, uh, process we find in uh, a species. So reproductive barriers. Remember students, for any speciation to occur, there could be geographical barriers or it could be reproductive barriers. Reproductive barriers brings in changes with the uh, genetical characters, physical characters, behavioral characters. So pre-mating isolating forces like uh, differences in the courtship behavior, then abnormality in the genitalia structure, then abnormalities related to the gametes. All this, uh, uh, even with the fertilization process. So all these forces acts as the reproductive barriers and brings in certain of the uh, genetic changes in the organisms. So we have learned about this reproductive uh, barriers in reproductive isolation types in the previous uh, session. The other reproductive barriers that brings in genetic changes includes post-zygotic uh, um, uh, reproductive isolation mechanisms. Students, here too, zygotic mortality, sterility of hybrid, then breakdown of hybrid, etc. takes place. So reproductive isolation leads to a very important process, we call it as reinforcement. Reinforcement between two species through the process of natural selection and sexual selection. So reproduction, uh, reproductive isolation will form a new species uh, uh, by the reinforcement process. And this takes place through the process of selection, which could be natural selection or sexual selection. So this divergent speciation through reproductive isolation forms a new species. It occurs by two patterns. So we are understanding diverse, uh, divergent speciation that requires reproductive isolation which can take place by two ways. First one is allopatric speciation and second one is sympatric speciation. The first one to start is allopatric speciation. Students remember the term allos means different and you can also call it as others, others. Patrick means for the land or simply a place. So in allopatric speciation, it requires two geographical places for a species to form. So the organisms need to get into two different areas to become a new species or to form a new species. So, in simple, this type of speciation is caused by geographical um, isolation or geographical barriers. Generally, the examples for geographical isolation can be quoted here for allopatric speciation also. Rabbit species down in the picture, when we look at the ancestral population is forming towards right side, the ancestral population only, sorry, left side, 
whereas towards the right side the color of it when we look at it gradually changes indicating the change in the character both physically and genetically a new species gets evolved at the ultimate uh, uh, end time so this is due to a river that separates them so river acts as a geographical barrier separating our ancestral population into two groups and they form totally a new individuals so ultimately the end products of species when we look at they cannot mate so they are reproductively also isolated so geographical barriers isolate them towards one side the other side is the reproductive isolation is also seen in this group of arcadism such group of speciation is called allopatric speciation uh in geographical isolation even members will migrate to a newer place and do not come back so they voluntarily move to the isolated places and they don't come back again in this newer place <coughs> excuse me they reproduce with the genetic variations uh, uh, and form a new species of organisms so this is the special uh, concept related to allopatric speciation students remember we generally find the geographical barriers such as mountains volcanoes islands then glaciers rivers human activities like hunting etc so the ultimate product or the end result of speciation here is totally two different species of organisms that shows genetic variations in them physically they appear different reproductively they cannot mate totally becomes two different species so this way if a speciation occurs we call the process as vicarious speciation and the species are called as vicarious species so the best example to cite allopatric speciation is darwin's galapagos uh, uh, finches they geographically got isolated and developed genetic variations in them later they became totally a different species so darwin could notice around 14 different species of finches uh, in the surrounding areas of galapagos island it is believed that initially a common ancestor finch got migrated to these islands so they got exposed to a newer environment uh, like availability of food in the place where they were and these finches also changed their genetic makeup got selected by the nature through natural selection and later developed totally into a new species which we call as a founder effect that is change in allelic frequency remember founder effect formation of new species it is due to change in allelic frequency as genetic variations brought them to a condition of a, a new species here also the natural selection and founder effect uh, a genetic drift brought in the genetic differences between two new species that results in the 
uh, diversity of finches of 14 uh, different uh, species. Remember students, selection, natural selection and genetic variation that is genetic drift. Both should combine to have uh, the new species formation in future. So this is what uh, scientists could uh, uh, notice in the uh, diversified finch varieties of Galapagos Islands. Examples of allopatic speciation. Number one is Darwin's Galapagos finches, what we had discussed just now. Single ancestor finch, migrates from the main land to these islands of Galapagos, experiences differences in the environment due to the geographical isolating barriers like availability of food. They showed genetic variations in them to adapt themselves to the environment for which they changed their allelic frequency due to the concept of mutation, remember. And these changes of genes got inherited into the offsprings and formed the 14 to 15 different species of finches now. That is about the importance of the example related to um, uh, finches of Galapagos Islands. The second example of allopatic speciation is Grand Canyon Squirrels. Its ancestor developed Harry's antelope squirrel through the geographical isolation. So initially the river that separated these two uh, ancestors into two different groups later went deeper to form the Great Canyon and isolated separately uh, and they experienced newer environments and started uh, 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 showing the genetic variations in them. Such variations were selected by the nature and uh, they formed a new species. Similarly, the great uh, I mean geographical barrier uh, uh, is a grand deep canyon which also formed uh, uh, the uh, species of squirrels like Albert and uh, uh, Kebab squirrels, which ha uh, have evolved through the process of allopatric speciation uh, that we have discussed in the previous session of geographical isolation. Different geographic regions will have different selective pressures like difference in the temperature, rainfall, predators, then food availability, etc. So, the organism showed genetic variations um, and forms at last a new species. So we can find the same in the picture down here. Example is Arctic fox and gray fox. Arctic fox uh, relates to the habitat of glacier zone and gray fox to the forest zone. Both originated from the same ancestor. So example for allopatric speciation. So geographical barriers for allopatric speciation will include the mountain ranges, then rivers, forests, earthquakes, uh, glaciers, etc. The next type of divergent evolution or speciation is sympatric speciation. It's a type of speciation that takes place without the geographical barriers or without the geographical isolation process. Or in simple I can say, it is a speciation process that takes place within the same geographical regions of the individuals. The term sim means same, 
Patrick, as we have understood, means fatherland or a place. So, speciation occurs, formation of new species will occur within the same geographical place between the individuals. Example is apple maggots on hawthorn plants and European apple species. Our students, if we remember the sympatric speciation, it is the formation of a new species within the same geographical area. In the picture down to its extreme right, where the ancestral population changes within the same area due to genetic changes and form a new species. Let me uh, explain the example of um, apple maggots. Maggot moths or flies in the ancient days of America started to live on a plant variety called hawthorn plants. In, on this hawthorn fruits, these maggots used to live. But later, after the uh, uh, entry of, invading of European apples into America, which were seen next to the plants of Hawthorn, the maggots started to fly onto the apple plants also, European apple plants. Remember, European apple plants are not of um, uh, American origin. So they were brought into America. So that's why the color is shown as green here. So this European apple plants, when started fruiting, this maggot flies started to visit the European apple plants also. And they started multiplying in it. They liked the environment. And here when we look at the maggot flies, which were on apple plant, Stop going or stop visiting the Hawthorne plants. So they geographically, is, uh, not isolated, they remain within the same geography, uh, geographical place. But they select different source and they become two different species. Originally, they, are, uh, they were on Hawthorne plants. Some went on to the apple plants of European uh, uh, variety in America, and they started living on the European apple plants. So, maggots on the Hawthorne plant, maggots on European uh, uh, apple plant never uh, showed mating. Scientists could see certain of genetic variations within these types of maggots. So they call this kind of speciation as sympatric speciation. They live together in the same place, but based on the resources on which they are dependent, they become isolated to be, uh, form new species. The offsprings of sympatric species, uh, species, when we look at, appearance-wise, they look similar. Genetically, they look different. So, reproductively, they are isolated and mating do not takes place, uh, take place between them. In simple, two sympatric species, when I say sympatric species, students remember, they are the population of organism that lives in a common geographical area. Okay, so two sympatric species of an area, they look similar morphologically, 
but genetically or reproductively they are isolated. It is due to change in their genotypes. The reproductive isolating mechanisms uh, again may be uh, as we have understood prezygotic or postzygotic isolating mechanisms as uh, we have learned uh, them in the previous sessions. So, sympathetic species are morphologically similar, but reproductively they are isolated. It is because of gene variation in them, genotype type is variable. In sympathetic population, there occurs the formation of newer species. This newer species will again form uh, a newer subspecies. So, a natural population which are morphologically similar becomes genetically different or reproductively they get isolated and such individuals are called, such species are called biological races or in simple term race and Mayer in 1942 he called them as sibling species. So, when you look at the uh, process of uh, um, a formation of subspecies from a newer uh, population, we call it as biological races or races or sibling species, all refers to the same group of organisms. The example for sympathetic speciation is apple megoids. Just now we have understood they are herbivorous insects feeding on the plant sources like the fruits and the ancestral megat used to feed on a fruit of a plant called haw thorn plant. Uh, it is a native plant of America. When European apple trees were introduced into America, few of these apple mega started shifting onto the uh, apple tree and they showed genetic variations in them, started to reproduce the offsprings which also lived and fed on the European apple plants, European apple fruits. So, they looked similar like that of their ancestors, but they never showed mating with the uh, ancestral forms. So, hence we call them as biological races or uh, 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 different species. So, both the megats, uh, megat population becomes two different species or uh, two different biological races. The sympatric speciation is more common in bacteria than the multicellular organisms. As we understood from the previous slides, sympatric speciation is due to chromosomal change, chromosomal variation. Generally, chromosomal defects occurs during the process of meiosis or uh, gamete formation, the gametogenesis. So, such defective gametes when undergoes the process of fertilization, it may result in uh, variation in chromosome number. Uh, one example of chromosomal variation is the concept of polyploidy. What is polyploidy? It is a condition where there is increase in chromosome number of organism. Okay. So, there is increase in number of chromosomes in the organism. So, down in the picture when we look at uh, we have only 4 chromosomes 2n is equal to 4 here in case of the left cell, a parent cell 
that forms the daughter cell where 2n becomes uh, doubled. That is 4n is equal to um, 2n is equal to 4 becomes 4n is equal to 8, which we call it as polyploidy. In sympathetic speciation, polyploidy is one of the reason for the chromosomal number change. Students remember, a polyploidy is increase in chromosome number in an individual. So what's happening to the chromosome number of the, <coughs> excuse me, the individual here, it increases. This is what we call it as polyploidy. So this is responsible for the sympathetic speciation generally. So polyploidy is defined as a condition in which there is an additional set of chromosomes takes place. So most of the plants will exhibit the concept of polyploidy, the process of polyploidy and form and uh, uh, enters into sympathetic speciation. There are two types of polyploidy uh, that the scientists have observed, namely autopolyploidy and allopolyploidy. In first type, autopolyploidy, where there is addition of set of autosomal chromosomes to the genetic makeup of the organism takes place. In other words, the genetic makeup of the same individual shows the additional uh, 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 A summation of chromosomes. It would get added to the organism itself. Best example is self-pollination in plants. If you have a normal diploid 2n is equal to 4, then the doubling of the chromosomes when it becomes, it becomes 4n is equal to 8, which we call it as autopolyploidy. Auto means self, poly means many, ploidy means addition in sets. So addition of sets of chromosomes within the same organism will take place. So similar chromosomes gets added up in the uh, uh, cells. The sympathetic speciation polyploidy is common with reference to uh, plants. In Here, the chromosome number gets multiplied. So self-pollination, what we observe in the plants is a good example for it. The second type of poly, I'm sorry, sympathetic speciation process is allopolyploidy. In allopolyploidy, the chromosomes of or chromosomal sets of two different organisms involved in sexual mating gets multiplied. Example, cultivable agricultural crops like wheat, cotton, tobacco plants, etc. Here what happens is that when two parents are involved in the sexual reproduction, both the parents will show polyploidy in their gametes. So when such polyploid gametes enters into fertilization, we get allopolyploidy uh, uh, resultant embryo. So this is how uh, uh, we have um, usage of allopolyploidy uh, in the development of variety of crops. Another example of uh, sympathetic speciation is cichlid fish of uh, Tanzania, that is Africa. Cichlid fish lives in small volcanic uh, uh, crater lakes of Africa. There are two forms of this fish, namely yellow green, the other one is blue. The yellow green cichlid lives along the shore regions, whereas the blue variety will live in the bottom of the lake. 
So they live in the same lake but in two different uh, places. Researchers have found that physically and genetically these two species of cichlid fish are different. It is not only physical variation, even genetic variation also they show. But this variation is happening within the same geographical area. And this kind of organisms, which are physically and uh, uh, genetically, shows the differences in the characters, but of the same species living in the same geographical area, are called ectomorphs. What you call them is ectomorphs. They both share common lake and same genus, but are reproductively isolated and thus they act as sympathetic species. The next example is the apple maggot fly. This moth fly, before European apples uh, uh, got introduced in America of 200 years back, these moths lived on hawthorn tree fruits. After 200 years, the scenario totally got changed. When European apples were introduced into America, few maggot flies settled on the apples of European uh, variety and started showing genetic differences in them. And in later years, they formed a new species of organism itself. They remained reproductively isolated different species it forms. Best example of sympathetic speciation. The next example includes the cultivable crops like wheat, oats, cotton and sugarcane. Here to cite I have taken up the example of wheat. Wheat species of diploid and corn wheat has 2n is equal to 14. Tetraploid condition when the number increases, a kind of a polyploidy. Emmer wheat are hard wheat. Here 14 pairs or 24 or uh, 28 chromosomes are seen. Then hexaploid variety of wheat called Volge wheat or soft wheat. It had 21 pairs or 42 chromosomes in there. So towards the left side is the picture of all these four varieties of wheat. They are all, uh, 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 the, uh, the uh, plant varieties with the uh, polyploid condition showing sympathetic speciation. So is the example of Drosophila also. Different species of Drosophila have different chromosome number and appearance of these chromosomes also varies. For example, Drosophila melanogaster and Drosophila americanus have four pairs of chromosomes. Drosophila willistoni has three pairs of chromosomes. Drosophila pseudobscura and Drosophila persimilis has five pairs of chromosomes. Drosophila virilis has six pairs of chromosomes. So likewise, different species of Drosophila itself will have chromosome number variation. It is due to the condition of uh, uh, polyploidy again. So natural polyploids are common in animal, I'm sorry, uh, are rare in animals than the flowering plants. I mean to say fl in flowering plants they are very common than the animals. In agriculture, to increase the yield, we practice, uh, we uh, tend to have breeding practices which are, uh, that had helped to introduce and grow new polyploid plants as a new species in the nature. So that's about the uh, sympathetic speciation. 
The next type of speciation is parapatic speciation. Para means adjacent. Patic refers to for the land or the place. It is a, a speciation which is extremely rare case of speciation that occurs when a large population is distributed in large geographical areas. You have a very huge population and they are distributed in a very large geographical area. In such cases, genetic variation occurs within the organisms, uh, uh, within few organisms and becomes isolated reproductively without any geographical barriers. So individuals will mate more commonly here with the closest neighbors resulting in the uneven gene flow. So down in the picture when you look at the green shade towards the left side uh, depicts or represents the ancestral population, original population. You find slowly a blue shade appearing indicating within that population you find certain genetical changes that has developed to form more number of blue color shade sorry increasing blue color shade indicating more number of individuals are getting formed of the new species and totally they get separated. So in the same geographical area we find the individuals which are reproductively isolated they do not involve in mating. It is also common in non uh, mating individuals that varies with morphology. Here too we find formation of subspecies which are genetically genotypically different which we call them as a sister species or a, um, biological race. Example for parapatric speciation is a common uh, grass called Agrostis tenues. It grows in a natural soil of open areas in um, the mining zone. But due to mining, they get exposed to the soils which are rich with the heavy metals. So, another species which is genetically modified starts tolerant to this heavy metal uh, 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 presence in the soil or contaminant soil. Thus occurs two types of species of grass within the same geographical area which is an example for um, parapatric uh, speciation. Similarly another example we do have is uh, land snail patula on the islands of Moria near Tahiti. Here 11 different species were recorded of snails in 15 kilometers of width in the island. Interesting feature is that there was no geographical barrier. So within a common area of 15 kilometers scientists could find this particular land snail of 11 species. So this is about the importance of a parapatic speciation. The other type of speciation is peripatic speciation. Peri means margin or peripheral zone. Here the marginal population, the population which remains at the margin or peripheral region Few of them start moving to a newer or closer uh, 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 nearby individual of population and starts reproducing. In simple, the marginal population become isolated and few individuals uh, will have genetic variations in them and starts having <coughs> excuse me, new species. It's a form of allopatic speciation, 
uh, which requires a geographical barrier. Uh, down in the picture you can find peripatic speciation indicating a green color uh, uh, indicates the ancestral population or original population and that small circle of yellow showing an arrow mark indicates the within that population the peripheral individuals will move away and forms a new species because of a geographical barrier. So peripatic speciation. In large population of a large geographical area, few individuals of the margin or periphery splits off from the main group and forms a new species in due course of time. It is due to a new environment like different uh, a feeding mode, different biological niche that they experience. The new population initially is of a small group of small number otherwise, but show variations as compared to the original group members. You can find how this speciation process takes place. They show genetic variations through the genetic drift process related to bottleneck, where a small group of population gets adapted to a newer environment with slight change in their behavior, morphology, and they inherit this variant genes to their offsprings. So this gene frequency increases in that small population that got separated leading to a newer species which we called as founder effect genetic drift. So in due course of time the natural selection takes place in the useful uh, traits. Students when we look at the diagram here the yellow represents the shade of uh, original ancestors Blue is the bird population, uh, ancestors of birds, sorry. Blue represents the peripheral group of, small group of uh, individuals which gets migrated to a new place and develops a new character indicating genetic variations in them is that red color. So, yellow color shows variations, initially is blue, later forms a new species. And initially they form blue color shade, it indicates the concept of uh, genetic drift related to bottleneck. Then they form totally a new species forming the red color that is founder effect. A small group of birds are splitting out of the main group. So red is initially of small number, later they become more because they start reproducing much. And this uh, characters are the adaptive characters which are selected by the nature. The next example of uh, uh, peripatic speciation is London underground mosquitoes. London underground mosquito is a type of mosquito found in the underground area of London. They have a peculiar way of biting and the causative organisms scientifically or technically are called uh, Culex pipiens molestus. These mosquitoes started to adapt themselves in the human made underground areas forming a new species. The recent evidences indicates that the southern mosquito variety related to Culex pipiens is residing in the underground because they like to have warm underground spaces. It to say they love to live in the temperatures where uh, uh, it is high in the undergrounds. 
So a unique uh, 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 species were recorded of this mosquito, which were studied by Kate, uh, um, Byron and Richard Nicholas. The species have very unique features and they cannot mate. So, Culex pipiens and Culex pipiens molestis. When we look at pipiens variety, which lives in the underground, likes the warm environment, whereas molestis variety is cold, intolerant, and bites only the rodents and humans. They breed all the year round and form a totally a, uh, a different species above the ground uh, to have that cold tolerance. So that's about the uh, importance of the uh, Culex species. The next type of speciation is arti artificial speciation. It is achieved by the inputs of the human influence. It is we we separate a population, preventing their process of mating, the natural mating. And so human beings create a, a new species in the environment. So it is we who create a new species in, in the environment, which becomes reproductively isolated, morphologically is, uh, different, genotypically also would be different. This is process is called as artificial selection. The best examples to cite for this is the modern domesticated animals and plants, especially of the dog varieties. Um, similarly, the laboratory in vitro applications, I mean experiments, have made the Drosophila to form different species at different environmental conditions in which they get experienced into. Drosophila, <coughs> excuse me, Surabscura, Drosophila, Persimiles are de developed by this kind of uh, artificial selection process in the laboratories. Karpachenko crossed the radish variety with the cabbage. Both of them had 18 chromosomes in them but belonging to two different species. You could successfully get a variety of rabbage a product of these two, which is a tetraploid variety with 36 chromosomes in it. So this is again a process of artificial selection where the human beings have created new species of a polyploid variety of plant in the nature. So with this we are completing the concept of speciation. Students remember Speciation is a, 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 a very important driving force for the process of evolution. After we understanding the concept, let us now consider and answer the MCQs related to this particular concept of speciation. The origin of species from pre-existing species is called speciation. Answer is D. Evolution means history of race, no, it is history and development of race with the variation, variation concept is important. So answer is C. This is a key to speciation of population. So what is key here? It is reproductive isolation of this four, answer is B. A species that inhabits different geographical area is B allopatric speciation. So where the geographical barriers are involved in the process of speciation. In the same geographical region, if the new species evolve from a single ancestral species, 
than the actual process of speciation is sympatric speciation. So answer is A. If the population in an area are not geographically isolated, interbred, developed a distinct life uh, style are named as parapatic speciation because they remain in the same large geographical area okay and they start forming a new species so there is no geographical isolation between them so this kind of uh, speciation evolution can be expected to be faster while the speciation between the speciating events so which kind of speciation is more faster than the actual process of uh, speciation it is a peripheral speciation Sibling species are also known as biological races. So answer is C. Modern breeds of domestic dogs have evolved as a result of which type of selection? It is artificial selection because human beings are involved in the process uh, uh, of bringing a new species. An increase in chromosome number in an individual plant is a condition called in any organism we call it as polyploidy. So answer is A. Students, in this session we have understood the key role of speciation process within the evolution. The references includes web references of Wikipedia and Britannica.com. And book references includes Organic Evolution of Virabala Rastogi, Evolutionary Biology by Virabala Rastogi, then Cell Biology, Genetics, Molecular Biology, Evolution and Ecology by Verma and Agarwal. Thank you all students. Your queries and comments can be posted to my personal WhatsApp number. Please do give your comments after watching the video. Thank you all. Take care of your good health during this pandemic time.